Towards the end of the 19th century, weightlifting for entertainment purposes emerged in Europe, sparking the beginning of a physical culture that had never been seen before. This didn't entail building muscle and symmetry on a person's frame, but instead focused on impressing the masses with feats of strength and daring acts. As the 20th century approached, the aesthetics of an individual began to be considered more seriously. In contrast to the overweight strongman image, a more chiselled and toned physique was beginning to capture the wonder and imagination of Western populations, with Eugene Sandow championing this emerging movement. This development meant that bodybuilding was balanced with weightlifting, as individuals would often split their on-stage routine between posing and lifting sizeable objects. As with many sports, weightlifting poses an inherent risk to a person's well-being, and in this video I want to touch upon some of the bizarre and horrific accidents that have taken place under the bright stage lights. Arthur Saxon was a German strongman and circus performer born on April the 28th, 1878. At the age of 14, Saxon and his two younger brothers would hold strength contests in their parents' back garden. They began to travel as the Saxon trio and held nightly performances that highlighted their unbelievable strength. A few of their acts consisted of a car holding six men driving atop of them with their legs supporting a bridge and bent presses where Arthur would lift his brothers and weights above his head. Saxon's death is still somewhat of a mystery, but it has been widely claimed that it came during one of his bodybuilding performances. Saxon was in the midst of performing a feat of strength involving a car which was balanced on a bridge of wood. Tragically, the bridge broke under the strain, causing the car to fall on top of the muscle man himself. After the accident, it's said that he caught pneumonia whilst in the hospital, leading to him passing away. Vladislav Kurchakik, otherwise known as Bobby Pandor, was an old-time strongman of the bronze era of bodybuilding. He and his brother, Ludwig, were champion gymnasts and went to England in the early 1900s with a sensational horizontal bar, posing, muscle control and hand balancing act. Unfortunately, at this time, hand balancing feats were waning in popularity due largely to the emergence of strongman events. Consequently, in 1907, Panda made the trip to America where his shows attracted a greater viewership. Until 1915, he toured American vaudeville, performing both gymnastics and posing routines. A report from the Topeka Daily Capital from October 1911 stated, Pandal and his brother's acrobatic work compares well with the best that has been here this season. Pandal closes with a posing exhibition, showing his muscles off, of which he has a plenty. However, during a performance in 1915, Pandor suffered an accident on stage which largely curtailed his lifting career. It's fairly difficult to determine the exact extent of his injury along with what actually happened, with sources simply describing it as a bad accident. Now this is simply speculation, but it is stated that Pandor would often do his posing and gymnastics on a white Roman style column which seemed to be about 10 feet in the air. A fall from this podium could have caused him a fairly serious injury, which led to his retirement. He passed away either in his late 30s or early 40s. Gallen Goff was born on May 30th, 1899 in Kentucky. After joining the Marine Corps at a young age, he was enlisted to fight in World War I. During the Battle of the Marne, a piece of shrapnel launched by the explosion of a German bomb split his head open, piercing his brain and leaving him paralysed on the right side of his body. Once back in the US, he was sent to a government hospital where his condition began to steadily improve. Goff later described how he used rocks lashed to sticks for barbells and ash cans full of gravel for weightlifting. Out of a job, Goff decided to enter the thrilling world of daredevil antics, with one of his main stunts being that he'd hang by his teeth from a rope suspended off a plane. And yes, the plane was literally flying at the time. Galen Goff's exploits did not go unnoticed, and he was asked to perform as a strongman for Brown and Dyer's carnival. 
However, only a few months in, he suffered a horrendous accident in front of a packed out audience. Whilst performing a jaw feet act, in which six men were hanging from a bar he held with his teeth, the bar suddenly split. The shattering of the bar caused him to lose many of his teeth and he left the stage with blood pouring out of his mouth. He was compelled to take much time off to recover, later deciding to start performing on his own instead. George Lurich was an Estonian Greco-Roman wrestler, strongman and bodybuilder of the early 20th century. He was also the trainer of Estonian wrestlers and weightlifters George Hackenschmidt and Alexander Eberg. In 1894, around the age of 18, he travelled to St. Petersburg where he practiced weightlifting and wrestling. Lurich performed in St. Petersburg's summer gardens, competed with local wrestlers and made various lifting demonstrations together with fellow strongman Gustav Bosberg. Prior to World War I, Lurich travelled to the United States to perform for American audiences. Lurich performed in freestyle wrestling matches between 1913 and 1917, yet on June 19, 1915, during a wrestling bout at the Manhattan Opera House, Lurich was painfully injured by Valdex Obisco, causing him to forfeit the bout in front of spectators. Lurich ran from the stage howling that he was hurt before collapsing behind the scenes. He was removed to the dressing room where he was attended by a physician from the New York hospital to which he was later removed. In making this video, I wanted to pay homage to the brave souls that have dedicated their lives to this craft. They shall not be forgotten.